Hey guys, welcome back to the airspace. Is your quiet compressor just a little bit too much? Not quiet. So needing to get some work done because I've been kicked out of my studio because, well, you know, it's still under construction in there for those of you who follow me regularly. So I had to bring this into my living room and with these hardwood floors and kind of open space, it was just a little bit too much. So we're gonna quiet it down a little bit. I'm gonna go over the steps that I use outside of building a full-fledged hush box. All right, first things first. One, if you got one of these compressors and you're telling me it gets louder over time, did you know there's a filter in here? Right here, inside this, this thing. You just twist this off. That was a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be. And then you get these filters and you change them out. You know what this is right here, folks? That is called laziness. So we're gonna put a new filter in. I'll leave you guys a link for the filters. Um, most of these, California Air Tool, the Harbor Freight Fortress, this Cobalt, they all take the same size filter, but measure and make sure. If you didn't know that these don't have filters, and you've been running a compressor for a long time, yeah, get rid of that crap. Secondly, maybe or maybe not, your compressor had one of these hoses. Most likely it did. There's a hole, this hose should go in here. And when you put this hose inside that, that little hose right there makes a significant difference in the sound level that you hear coming out of this compressor. Even better bonus points if you can get a hose and then attach it to a pipe and run it outside, you won't hardly hear any noise coming from the air going into the compressor. So after changing my filter, putting the hose on, this is going to be my baseline. So we're at like 65 decibels, roughly 66 decibels, maybe 67. Next, listen to see and touch things and see if you're getting any rattles and stuff. In this particular case, my heat shield was vibrating against the top. So I took it off. Now, if my compressor's been running, I can still put my hand on top of it but if you're getting a heavy duty cycle, that can get hot. If you burn yourself, it is not my fault. This gets hot. Don't put your hand on it. Well, I'm putting my hand on it, but I already knew it wasn't hot enough. But if you ran it for a long time, it's gonna get you a nasty burn. This plastic cover right here, don't need that. All right, right now, the biggest source of my noise is vibration. My floors in here are wood. It's sitting directly on the wood floor. And my house was built to, you know, fairly modern house, regular code. So when this is sitting on here, it creates a little bit of vibration. For that, to fix that, you're going to need mats. You're also going to need decoupling. So for decoupling, I've got some old floor mats. And I'm just going to cut me a couple little pads. I don't want to lay the entire floor mat down on the floor. And I'm going to take these pads right here, place them down on the floor. Then I got this pretty heavy, maybe 40 pound box of vinyl tiles, and I'm going to place that right on top of it. Sand is an excellent source of mass. It also, the way, because the way sand works, it will also kind of like fold on itself. It absorbs them vibrations really, really well. So if you have access to some play sand, you want to build a little box and fill it with some play sand and use that for your mass and your decoupling, great. If you got some ankle weights laying around and set the ankle weights down instead of rubber pads, it will help you tremendously. Had another gym mat, just laid it on top of there and put my compressor on top of that. So that's already a three decibel improvement, even more so what's hard to understand is how much the getting rid of the vibrations make a difference in the room. And so it's not transmitting sound across the floor into the other rooms of the house as much. Also now. guys, I want to apologize for my mess. I have mess everywhere. We are not only remodeling the studio, I'm still working on the kitchen and the living room is also getting remodeled. We're putting all new floors in. We got drywall going on. We got everything going on everywhere and all my stuff's moved in boxes. Now, the other thing is there's a pressure switch in here. And in this case, I'm gonna turn my pressure down so that I don't need 150 PSI, which is what this thing pumps up to normally. So I'm gonna drop my pressure down to where I'm running between 60 and 90. 
it's always with these type are only one adjustment in it now this could particular cobalt quiet tech is kind of a really really odd beast in that what you have to do is you have to pry out the two sides pop this little lever out remove that unscrew this and pull it off to get to the pressure switch most of them are simply a screw and then when you get that far down you'll see a plus and a minus it will be helpful to pull up the spec or the product tech sheets for your particular compressor also if you break your compressor that is not my fault however I've adjusted a lot of pressure switches in my life and turning them up and down is not going to hurt anything all right pro tip turn your compressor on in this particular case to shut it off I have to touch this button turn your compressor on let it pump up to the max pressure you want and then turn it off now when you turn this button down if you're paying attention there's a very slight click you'll hear from the pressure switch which will tell you that's the point in which it's clicking off put your stuff back together so why did I adjust the max pressure down well as the compressor gets closer and closer to its maximum pressure it's going to work harder and harder it tends to make the most noise and create the most vibrations as it's getting really really close to the shutoff I'm sure many of you have witnessed this and the lower that you can set the pressure and still work for your needs the less vibration and the less noise that you're going to create all right so now short of building a hush box we just want to uh, get something some soft so we don't have hard reflections around it if you want something soft around it you can use a blanket you can use a pillow whatever to kind of stop echoes from bouncing off the wall behind you i've got my dog's bed as you can see this one looks really sad about it this one claimed it back immediately and let's be real about it that's just where they lounge around when they don't want to be on the couch the love seat or my bed as a side note memory foam is excellent at absorbing vibrations it would do even better than these little uh matte pads that i have here so memory foam really works well at absorbing how vibrations. much difference does it make uh let's we can test with the decibel reading but that doesn't always tell the full truth but let's see what we got for decibels now or maybe i have to turn it that way you guys can read it as you can see, as I talk, the decibel reading go higher because my voice is louder than... That is, what, 10, 11, 12 decibels difference? That is tremendous. So, it is now at a level in which I can run this in here, even if my wife is sleeping, and I could be able to continue to work in my kitchen or dining room area, whatever you want to call it, and let her sleep. So I am going to make a video about building a hush box in the future because I'm probably going to do some type of hush box um, for my compressor when I move into my small area in the studio there. But for now, these are some things you can do, some tips you can take. Now obviously if you've got a big 90 decibel compressor, you're going to have to go to extreme measures. You would definitely need a hush box to try to use one of those in your house. I wouldn't use one in my house. Anyway, I have. Don't recommend. But uh. That's going to be a wrap for today, guys. I hope you all appreciate it. Please share, like, subscribe, all those good things. And I want to see you on the next one. But anyway, guys, we appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good one.